Hello everyone and welcome to the launch of a new series in our Civil Engineering Essentials channel in which we'll be talking about ETAPS, the structural analysis software that is tailored for multi-story and high-rise buildings. Of course, I'm using ETAPS version 19, but I think the latest version is 21 and I will be explaining version 19, but please notice that Whatever is on version 19 is going to be uh, almost identical to version 21. There are some enhancements and I might at the end of my video series do a quick uh, comparison between those two versions. But with that being said, well, today we're going to try and understand very quickly the graphical user interface of ETABS. ETABS stands for Extended 3D analysis for building structures or extended three-dimensional analysis for building structures and it's done by a company called CSI it's uh, based in the USA and it's well known for its SAP and SAFE and ETAP softwares among others that are also known within the civil engineering realm of course I get asked the question a million times which structural analysis software is best and my answer is it depends on where you work because uh, Every one of those uh, structure analysis softwares costs thousands upon thousands of dollars to acquire. So uh, you will not be working at a place where it has access to Autodesk and CSI and STAD and Access and Midas. Um, meaning that you will be working at a workplace where, for example, the structure analysis software used in that workplace is ETABS or is Autodesk Robot. And one of the and that's the reason why I'm covering both for now those softwares and will be planning in the future to cover other softwares. Okay, so with that being said, let's dive into the video. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. I will just click on your model here or click on this. And if you click on new model, you get bombarded with new information. Uh, if you just apply blindly, I don't recommend that. You can click OK to use the saved user default settings. Now, you don't know what those user default settings are. So if you even click on OK, you don't know what you're agreeing to. Use settings from a model file, meaning that if you have a model file, you can uh, select the model file to open the settings from within the model file. This becomes helpful if you work in the company and they have a certain template model file that you all in the company abide to. Like we all have agreed that those are our default settings and you have a certain template so you can use it to open the, the user default user settings from there. Or you can use built-in settings by saying, hey, my display units are in metric, my code of steel is AISC in metric, uh, the section database. My design code is the 360 AISC um, 16, 2016. And my concrete design code is the ACI 2019. Um, of course, you can, change the, you can change those things later. If you click OK, you get bombarded with yet another um, quick model template. I will choose blank for now. I will be talking about this later within this video series. I click OK and now I'm greeted with this big thing. You have Window 1, Window 2, and Model Explorer. Now before I go any further, uh, the 3D engine in ETABS is a little bit, when you have a lot of elements here, it might be a little bit overwhelmed. We will see this in the future. But uh, you have two windows here. You have window one and window two, and you can display different things on both windows. For example, here you can display the 3D of the structure, and here you could display the 2D of the structure at level, for example, three meters, like you want to see the second story of a structure. It's somehow good to have two windows because you can have a generalistic look on the right side, for example, and a more detailed look on the left side. I kind of like that, so why not? There are other things here like one story or stories and similar stories. This becomes very important when we do model because sometimes you want to model a beam and want to, want to have this beam being applied on all stories. It's kind of a cool trick. Uh, the robot equivalent of this is uh, copy and drag or without drag or basically just copy the story. That's a cool trick. If you click on units, you get, or just if you hover on units, you get your unit system being shown for you. If you click on it, you can quickly change between unit systems or you can even show 
variant forms and change them from here. I will come to that later. We have here a model explorer, which basically lists uh, structures, stories, grids, and so on. Of course, those are defined by default. And the properties that were defined, this lists everything in your model. For now, we're not going to use this for now. You're going to be sometimes using this in the future. This model explorer is a very good tool sometimes when you want to do a quick change without going through the tedious, model, tedious menus here. Speaking of menus, you have here a very quick access bar, which you can change to change the viewport, for example, here. You can zoom in and out, although the mouse wheel will do the most uh, work for you. Um, you can lock and unlock, you can calculate, you can save and so on. And here is a trivia for you. Uh, when you save an ETAPS structure, when you save an ETAPS structure, I want you please to open a folder with the structure's name before you save anything. Because ETABS, uh, when it saves a structure, it doesn't save just one file like Autodesk Robot. No, it saves a barrage of files in this folder for different things. Sometimes you have stiffness matrices and separate files than the model, than the plot, so it's good. And you should have a folder for each structure. I uh, will not save anything today. Um, another thing is if you go to options, you can go to display units here and you can see the same thing that we accessed from our units here. You can change the units if you want. You can change the zero tolerance. Zero tolerance means like at what value does it become a zero? The number of decimal places, the significant figures, it's kind of what you see uh, in other softwares where you can basically select the number of decimal places to be shown. What you have here in options uh, can be saved like whatever you finish here in the options, you can save as default settings, meaning when you open eTabs next time and you ask for the user default settings, it will be loading whatever you have saved here. There is something called tolerances. This will come uh, later into play, like when does it merge joints, when does it consider it to be a column or not. Those are things we'll be talking about later. And, well, that's eTabs GUI. In a nutshell, you have some display settings here to show and hide forces. You can do some design here. This is your design toolbar. And that's basically everything. And this is, of course, your drawing toolbar, how to draw stuff. And before I continue, before I finish, I want to mention to you that ETABS uh, follows a define, then draw, or define, assign, and draw. That's what it's doing. Like, uh, you define your material first, and then your section, and then you draw. Your sections kind of disconnected like in other softwares like robots sometimes you have the define and the draw in one GUI and even the assign but here it's different you have to define first in a separate window and then draw using that definition so it has a kind of different philosophy than other structure analysis softwares but in the end it's another software so of course it will have another way of dealing with it but uh, all the softwares will be following a similar uh, idea when it comes to the inside and how those softwares work. All those softwares are based on something called the finite element method, which we have a video series linked above. And uh, the basic principles of all those softwares is somewhat similar. So knowledge of this finite element method might help you understand the intricacies of those softwares. So yeah, uh, that's everything I wanted to talk about in this video. Of course, before I finish, I want to give a huge C-sized shout out to our dear channel members, whose name are going to be shown on the screen. I want to thank them from the bottom of my heart for their support of the channel, as their support helps us deliver those videos on time and efficiently. And for that, I'm really, really thankful. With that being said, I hope that you enjoyed the video and that it was beneficial for you. Of course, if you have enjoyed the video, then please like, share, comment and subscribe, especially subscribing, because it helps increase the reach of my channel. As per usual, this is the Civil Engineering Essentials channel, and we'll catch you in the next video.